my good friends, this is episode 4 of BTD5 Science. So what's going on today? We're going to talk about the solar system. So I wanted to talk about quite a few things about the solar system that I find are interesting. I'm going to go over pretty much every single planet and just talk about a few of those things as well as a, f a few other um, important objects in our solar system. So let's get started here. By far the most important object in our solar system is the Sun. The Sun is just a normal everyday star. It's just a main sequence star. There's nothing too crazy or special about it compared to all, all the rest of the uh, stars in our galaxy and in the universe besides that it's just completely average. It's just an average regular star. Uh, the Sun actually makes up 99.9% of everything in our solar system. It makes 99.9% .9 of the mass. So just think about it, just think about it like that. Everything else is only one one thousandth of the solar system. Kind of ridiculous. So the sun is definitely an important object. The next thing is Mercury. Mercury is the first planet here. Mercury is in the group of terrestrial planets, which there are four terrestrial planets in our solar system. The terrestrial planets are small and rocky, and they all have metal cores. So that's really how you define those guys. Um, the Earth is technically small, just in case you wanted to know. Uh, Mercury, there's nothing too crazy or special about it. I mean, the coolest thing about it is probably that it has um, extreme hot during the day and then also extreme cold during the night. So even though it's extremely close to the sun, by far the closest one to the sun, it does still get extremely cold on the night side of it. Uh, there's actually huge shifts in temperatures. It's by far the biggest shift in temperature um, on, compared to any other planet in our solar system. And it revolves in a somewhat flower-shaped pattern. It doesn't go around in a complete uh, oval shape like almost all the other ones, or spherical shape if you want to think about it like that. They're really kind of ovalish. But uh, next one is Venus. So Venus, if you notice, that's the uh, second planet right there. You can actually see it on the screen. Venus is the hottest planet in their solar system. It has the highest average temperature um, because of the greenhouse effect. Basically, carbon dioxide traps heat, and it, hits, it just has a ton of carbon dioxide in it. And that's what makes it so unbelievably special. It also has extreme pressures that is hot, pressures so ridiculous that if you were there right now, you'd easily just get crushed to death. It wouldn't even be the heat that killed you. It'd probably be the pressure. You would not be able to breathe or anything like that. Also, Venus is kind of weird because it has a retrograde motion, which means it kind of rotates in the wrong direction. All the planets tend to rotate in the exact same direction. They actually all revolve in the same direction as well. But Venus, for whatever reason, is one of the only one of the only other planets that ro that rotates in the opposite direction. It actually takes 243 days to go in uh, to actually rotate just once in the opposite direction, and that was probably caused by a giant asteroid or meteor or something that actually hit Venus. Uh, the next one is Earth. Earth, oh my goodness, yes, that's where we live, yay. Earth is alive. That is probably the coolest thing about it. It's one of the only planets, um, it's one. It's the only terrestrial planet that has a bunch of weather, tectonic plates, volcanoes, and earthquakes, wind, water, all those things. Uh, most of the other planets don't have them. I mean, Venus has a little bit of wind and um, has some, uh, that's really about it. Yep, just has some wind. Has some wind and some weather, and that's about it. Mars as well, it does have a little bit of weather. It has some Mars storms on it. But other than that, nothing too crazy. So now we're on to Mars. Yeah, Mars has extreme evidence that in the past it had running water. There's also extreme evidence of lakes and oceans. So just keep that in mind. Mars was probably harboring life. Yes, anywhere where there's water, there is usually life. So that's what I usually think about. Um, I think there's a lot of evidence to support that Mars used to have life. Now, that's not a for sure thing. We haven't uh, discovered any life or any uh, any existence of life yet, but there's a bunch of organic particles that we found. There's a bunch of crazy things that we found on Mars that leads us to believe that there probably was life at some point. Um, especially the evidence of water. And then the next thing, you have the asteroid belt. So if you notice, um, Mars would be the fourth planet in uh, this game right here, but Right beyond that, there's actually something called an asteroid belt, which is just a bunch of little rocks and icy little objects floating around in between Jupiter and Mars. And those guys, nothing too crazy or special about them, but every once in a while you get some of those guys that just crash together and they'll bounce out and start heading in toward the terrestrial planets or even go into the sun or something. But every once in a while you do get one that actually comes in and hits Earth. And that's, uh, not always. They actually come more from the Kuiper belt, which is in a very odd... Uh, back end of the solar system, but still we do have that that happen every once in a while. And now we're going to start on the Jovian planet. So the first four were the terrestrial planets, and then the last four are the Jovian planets. And the Jovian planets all have, they're just giant gas, they're just 
gas giants. Whoa, yeah, they're gas giants. They all have rings, so even though we always talk about Saturn having rings, all four of them actually do have rings. They're a little bit faint on some of them, but they still do exist. Um, they all have little rocky cores, so even though uh, the inner, inner planets tend to have more metally cores and iron cores, the other ones have more of a rocky core. So even though... Um, they're made of mostly gas, and we call them gas giants. The core is still rocky, so it probably could have a, uh, you know, a pretty good-sized Earth or something inside of Jupiter, if you think about it like that. Um, so here we go. Let's go on to Jupiter. What's cool about Jupiter? Jupiter has extremely strong winds, of course. If you haven't, if you actually look at Jupiter, uh, you have you can see little bands around it, and those little bands are actually just giant, but like. Uh, things of gas just going around the planet and they actually move a little bit faster near the equator which uh, kind of causes storms and stuff and that's why Jupiter has this thing called the Great Red Spot so this, Ju this Jupiter has this Great Red Spot it's a storm that's been going on for more than 300 years since we first looked at Jupiter it's been there think about it like that a giant tornado or a giant hurricane for 300 plus years redonkulous um what else? Jupiter also has four really cool moons. I really like the moons. I think they're super ridiculously interesting. Hopefully you guys do too. Um, there's Ganymede, Calypso, Io, and then also my favorite, Europa. So I wanted to talk about Europa really fast. Not for an extremely long time, but Europa is super ridiculously interesting. Europa is the place that I believe that life could actually exist elsewhere in our solar system. It's just a giant body of salt water. That's all it is. It has some ice on top, and then it's salt water underneath. And you know what? When we think of uh, places on Earth where life exists, we didn't, we didn't used to think about it in the bottom of oceans, but that's where it is, guys. It's in the bottom of oceans. And also, it probably has a pretty reasonably warm core as well. And the reason for that is because of all the tidal forces that J Jupiter causes on. Jupiter has so much gravity, it causes uh, Europa to kind of stretch a little bit, stretch in and out, and causes the core to be a little bit warmer than it probably would be for being that far away from the sun. And also, that's why Io has a bunch of volcanoes on it. You might not think Io should be very hot, but it is. It has volcanoes erupting nearly all the time. And then let's move on to Saturn. So Saturn, Saturn's kind of, everybody knows Saturn because of its rings, of course. They're icy and rocky rings, and the rings are actually separated into bands, which not that many people know. They're just, they just think it's one solid object almost, or something like that. No, it's a bunch of little tiny objects of little ice and little things of rock, and uh, you can actually see little gaps in the rings. So it's kind of cool that uh, they actually are separated into gaps like that. They're technically a bunch of different rings instead of just one ring. Also, cool about the rings is that they're not going to last forever. They only last probably a few hundred million years or so, unless new material is added. So we don't really know where the new material comes from, and we don't know if Saturn's going to have rings forever, or these awesome rings forever. But as of right now, unless Saturn gets some more things that it can break up into those little tiny things of rock and ice, Saturn's rings are going to slowly, slowly disappear over, of course, hundreds of millions of years hundreds of millions of years, which is a pretty long, darn long time. Then we've got Uranus. So yes, a lot of people call it Uranus. I call it Uranus because it seems to run smoother and it sounds kind of cooler. It makes me look special, so I like being special. Uranus is blue in color, and guess where that comes from, guys? The methane layer of gas near the upper atmosphere. <laughs> oh, the irony of how did Uranus get that name and then also be made of methane? Oh, goodness gracious. So, um, I think Uranus is one of the most boring planets in the solar system besides its retrograde motion and uh, its kind of weird axial tilt. It's basically, it, you know how I was telling you guys Venus rotates in the wrong direction? Well, so does Uranus. And it could just be that Uranus is the, it, it could just be that Uranus is actually just flipped. So it's kind of flipped on its side, like 90 degrees, which basically makes it kind of spinning the wrong way. It's kind of spinning like, uh, like it's rolling somewhere instead of like it's spinning somewhere. And uh, that's the weird thing about Uranus, I guess. Neptune, uh, yep, Neptune's not unbelievably special. The cool thing about Neptune is that it has the strongest winds of any other place on the solar system, which I think is pretty cool. And it's about a thousand miles per hour. Can you guys believe that? A thousand miles per hour? Tornadoes here, if they get over 300 miles per hour, we think that's probably one of the strongest storms that we've ever seen. And these have thousand mile per hour winds. It also has something called a great blue spot. So the Jupiter had a great red spot, and now Neptune has a great blue spot, which is pretty cool. It's also another giant storm that's been there for quite a long time. Um, I don't know the exact date. I didn't look that up, but it's been there for quite a while. 
And then we just got a few other things like dwarf planets. So Jupiter, you guys have heard of Pluto, of course. Um, a lot of people have been taught that Pluto was a planet and now is no more a planet. And I'm gonna I'm gonna agree that Pluto is no longer a planet. If you are butthurt about it and you want Pluto to be a planet really bad, hey, be my guest. I don't care, but it's not. So what is it though? It's a dwarf planet, and there's also a couple other dwarf planets. Um, why did we make Pluto? a dwarf planet and not an actual planet. It's because there's a lot of other objects beyond Pluto that are also um, pretty big and kind of fit the same planet thing. So we would we would not have nine planets. We'd have like 11, 12, 13, 15, somewhere around there planets. And you know what? People don't want to memorize all those planets. So they just decided to say, those aren't planets anymore. Those are dwarf planets. And I, I think that's a good idea. So the new definition of a dwarf planet is basically that they are round but is it's round. It's not a moon, so it can't be a moon and re revolving around that uh, planet. But here's the key factor, guys, that all the other planets have that these guys don't. They have not cleared the neighborhood around its orbit of little rocks and debris and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, there's all of these little rocks and little... Uh, asteroids and stuff like that that are just kind of in the path around these planet around these dwarf planets, so they're not technically a planet. Um, there's Eris, Pluto, and Ceres. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's C E R E S, so Ceres. I think that's how you say it. And those are the three main dwarf planets that are kind of the coolest of them. There's many, many more though um, that we might not even consider dwarf planets, but they're kind of in there that we probably should call them that. Anyways, that's all I got for today. If you guys liked it, please, please press like. If you didn't like it, let me know why in the comments. Any more suggestions and throw them my way. Have a good one.